One of the things you'll do most when using Python in Houdini is changing parameter values. Parameters are these options that we have here that allow us to change the behavior of a node. Here I have a geometry node that contains a box node, just a box. The first thing I'm going to do is identify the box node using the who module dot and the node function. In parentheses, I'll put the path of the node I want to identify, which in my case would be slash obj slash geo1 slash box1. Quick tip, if you feel lazy, instead of typing the entire path manually, what you can do is click on the node and drag it to the Python shell. There you go! And of course, I'm going to store it in a variable called box. Okay, now that I have identified my node, I'm going to type box and hit enter. It tells me that this node is an instance of the sub node class. Remember that sub is what Houdini calls the nodes that are inside a geometry node. Let's take a look at the side effects documentation, the node class. We see that this class has a few subclasses depending on what type of node it is. Cop node, dop node, all of these subclasses inherit the methods and attributes of the parent class, in this case, the node class. In other words, most of these methods we have here will also be available in these classes. Go now to the sub node class. And down here we have a method called parm. The parm method returns a parameter of the node, and in parentheses I have to put the name of the parameter I want to access. Alright, back to Houdini now. In the box node, what parameters do I have? The size, the center or the position, the rotation, the uniform scale, which is the global scale, to change all the axes at the same time. Let me set this back to the default values and say I want to edit the uniform scale parameter. But be careful with this. This name uniform scale we see here is the parameter label, a name set by us, by Houdini in this case, to help us identify this parameter more easily. The actual name of this parameter can be found by placing the pointer on the label. See, it says parameter, colon, scale. So scale is the actual name of this parameter. In the Python shell, first I'll put the node, box, because I want to access a parameter in the box node, and this node is already stored in this variable. Then I'll use the parm method we just saw in the documentation, parm, and in parentheses I'll put the actual name of the parameter I want to access, that in this case is scale. This will give us access to the scale parameter. If I hit enter, Python will tell me that this is actually an instance of the parm class, called scale, but that's all we've got for now. It is critical that you understand that by using this parm method, we get an instance of the parm class. Why? because that means that we will now have access to the methods of the parm class. Let's look in the side effects documentation for the parm class here in the left bar. I'm going to type parm, parm class. Here are the methods that this class contains. In the value section, there is this eval method as it says here, evaluates a parameter and returns the result of that parameter at the current frame. Back in Houdini, I'm going to use the code I entered before to access the scale parameter and store it in a variable called scaleParm. Ok, now this scaleParm is an instance of the Parm class, more specifically the scale parameter. And as we've just seen, the parm class has a method called eval, which returns the value of that parameter at the current frame. Well, press enter, and here we have the result, 1.0.
Let me change this value to 10. Repeat the code and now the value it returns is 10. To change the value of this parameter using Python, instead of using the eval method, I'll use the set method that we find in the documentation under the setting section. Go back to the Python shell and type scaleParm, that's my scale parameter, dot, and now I'm going to use the set method. And in parentheses, I'll put the new value I want to give to this parameter. This parameter value is a number, right? It's not a string, so I won't be using quotes. I'll put the number as it is. For example, 5. Press enter and the parameter will update. Bring the line back to the shell and change the value to 2. And the scale will now be set to 2. The scale parameter we've been changing is a single component parameter, but there are other parameters like size, center, or rotate that have more than one component. These are three-dimensional vectors. If we place the pointer, for example, on the size label, we see that it contains three parameters, size x, size y, and size z. If I want to change just one of these, I'll follow the same steps as before. From the box node, I'm going to use the parm method to get the size x parameter and store it in a variable called size x parm. Now I want to access that size x parm parameter dot and use the set method. I'm going to change its value to 3. Enter and now the size x meaning the size of the box on the x-axis is 3. I'm changing here only the x component of that vector. But what if I want to change all three axes at the same time? Well, in that case I shouldn't be using the parm method, but the parm tuple method. Go to the documentation and take a look at the subnode class. Here is the parm method we've been using so far, and further down I have this parm tuple method that I mentioned, which returns a tuple of parameters. This is the method we will use for parameters that have more than one component, like these ones here. So, I'm going to access my box node dot parm tuple and in parentheses I'll put the common name of all the components of this parameter. For the size parameter I have size x, size y and size z. If I remove the x, y, z components I'm left with size and that's the name I'll put in parentheses. And I'm going to store this as size parm. Now I can use the eval method we saw before on this size parm, which is the size parameter with its three components, and see its value. It returns a tuple with each component of that parameter, 3, 1, 1. 3, 1, 1. This is how vectors are represented in Houdini as tuples. To change the value of this parameter, all three components at the same time, we can use the set method, size parm dot and the set method. And now in the parentheses I'll put the vector a new parentheses that will contain the new values I want for each component. 3, 4, 5. This 3, 4, 5 is a tuple, a vector. The x component will be 3, the y 4, and the z 5. Press enter and all three components will be updated at the same time. Houdini also has non-numeric parameters like this primitive type, which is a menu with several options. Or these boxes below. If I try to get the value of the primitive type, whose actual name is type, Let's see what happens. Box.parm to access a parameter of the box node and the actual name of the parameter was type. I'm going to store it in a variable called typeParm and now 
type parm dot eval and empty parentheses. It returns 1. How is it possible that the value of this parameter is 1 if the elements of this list are text? Well, this menu is actually a list of items, and each item of a list has an index or position. These names that we see in the list are just labels, but when we choose one of them, the value that we are actually sending to Houdini is the index of that item in the list. It's set to the second option, polygon mesh, and that's why the result is 1. Remember that indices in a list start at 0. So the first item would be 0, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So yes, this parameter was set to polygon mesh, which will be index 1, and that's why the eval method returned 1. Knowing this, I'll use the set method to change the value of the parameter. Type parm dot set, and now the value should be the index of the item I want to choose from the list. For example, if I want it to be a simple polygon, the first option, I would put here 0. Press enter, and there you go, now it's set to the first option. If I want the second option, then I have to change it to index 1. And what about the toggles, these boxes that can be checked and unchecked? This one down here is the vertex normals parameter. Let's use that one. Box dot parm vertex normals and store it as vertex parm. Now I'm going to run an eval on that parameter to see its value. Press enter and it says zero. When the box is unchecked, the value is 0. When it's checked, the value is 1. Let me check that out. Right. Knowing this, if I want to change its value, I could use the set method. Vertex parm dot set, and in parentheses I'll put either 0 or 1. 0 to turn it off, 1 to turn it on. Right now it's turned on, so I could uncheck it by sending a 0. Yes, the box is now unchecked. I could also use true and false. Now it's unchecked, which in Python language means false. And if I set it to true and press enter, then the box will be checked. Notice that true looks like text, but we don't put it as a string because it's a Python keyword used to enable things. The keyword for disable is, as you can imagine, false.